Hello everyone, in this video we are going to see how to create folders dynamically in Blob based upon the file's last modified date. If you are new to our channel, hit subscribe. Your subscription will motivate me to produce more video in better quality. Let me show the acceptance criteria. In our storage account, we have two containers. The first one is our source and the second one is our destination. In the source container, we have the input file and it has a modified date over here. Based upon this modified date, we need to create folders dynamically inside our destination container. So let me show how it should look like. First, the year folder should be created and inside the year folder, the monthly folder should be created and inside the monthly folder, date folder should be created. So all these are based upon the file's last modified date. So in case if the file's last modified date is 21st, then 21st folder should be here. And inside the date folder, the file should be copied over here. One of our LinkedIn follower have asked us to make a video on this concept. So let's see how to do it. Before this, let me show how blob usually work. If you want to upload a file inside a folder what you need to do is first of all select the file and go to advanced and here you will have an option like upload to folder here you need to type the folder name what i'm going to do is i'm going to provide two folder folder one followed by folder two and now let's upload this file just click on upload and if you see here folder one followed by folder two and inside that your file is there so if you specify the folder structure along with the file name, then this kind of folder structure you can create. So let's see how we can do with our scenario. Before we start, I have cleaned up the destination container. The source container is having the source file. The first step is to create a linked service to the storage account from Azure Data Factory in order to do it. Go to manage section under Azure Data Factory and click on linked services and click on new and here search for blob and click on continue and provide a name to your link and we have already discussed all these type of authentication if you want uh, those video i'll be providing the url in the description and here in the drop down select account name and uh, let's test out the connection and click on create and yeah storage link is created now it's time to create a data set in order to create data set go to author and click on new data set and search for blob again this data set we are creating for the source file here provide the source uh, format and here provide a name to the source data set and from the linked service select the blob link which we have created and in the file path let's browse using this option and let me select the source container in our scenario the file name going to be same every day so i'm going to select this file as well so that it is like the file name will be constant every day just that modified date will vary and here you need to mention whether your file has header or not so the first column of the file is having the header part which means the column name our file is having the header name so I am checking this box and I want to import the schema from the source file. So I'm just selecting OK. And let me minimize this. So we have created a data set for our input container and the input file. And under schema, the schema of the file is copied from the input file. Now it's time to create a data set for our destination container. So here search for blob again and I want the output format in CSV and just provide a name to the output data set. Since both of the container exist in the same storage account, we have already created a common link to the blob and let me browse to select the container name and click on OK. Here file name we are going to parameterize. As I explained in the behavior of blob, we need to pass the folder structure along with the file name. So I'm going to parameterize that part. 
I want headers in my file so I'm just checking this and if you want to import schema you can do so but for destination it is not required you can select none or import from connection store anything is fine just click on ok and let me minimize this now let us see how we can parameterize this file name so in order to uh, parameterize let me show what we need to do go here under parameters just click on new and provide a name to the parameter if you want to change the data type of the parameter you can select from here but for our scenario string is enough and need not to provide any default value now under connections just click on file name text box and you will get the option like add a dynamic content click on it and you will find the created parameter over here just select this and click on ok so whatever the value comes to that parameter it will be applied over here meaning that file path will have that uh, parameter value now click on publish we haven't gave any specific values to the parameter I'll be showing how we can pass values to the parameter which is going to be our file name now let's proceed to create a pipeline in order to create a pipeline just click on this three dot and click on new pipeline provide a name to the pipeline if you wish minimize it before we get into the copy activity first of all we need to know what is the last modified date of the file in the source container with that only we will be able to set the folders so this is my files last modified date and time so with that only we are going to set our folders name and all we need to read this modified date in our azure data factory in order to do it search for get metadata so this is the task which will read the last modified date of the file so just select this and provide a name to the task and leave the rest of the item as it is and go to settings tab under settings tab select the input data set which we have created because we need to read the input container only from there only we need to fetch the last modified date now we need to specify which property we need to read from the data set select the field list and from the drop down we have various option we can check if file exists last modified size of the file and type of the file so we have various option for our scenario we need last modified i have selected it and now let us run this task alone just to see what value it is fetching just click on debug it is running let me refresh the status yeah it got completed so just click on this icon to see the output of the file and under output if you see it successfully written the last modified date and time of the file let me copy everything and let me paste in a notepad i will take the last modified value alone in a separate notepad this is the value which we got but the actual format which we need for our scenario is year followed by month followed by date and followed by the file if we pass the value in this format to the parameter then we will achieve our scenario let's minimize this and let's get back to our azure data factory so inside azure data factory search for copy activity we are going to copy from source container into the destination container after this uh, get metadata activity so previously we used to add output from this icon now you have a tick mark over here just drag and drop simple so that after get metadata activity our copy activity will run now in our copy activity navigate to source tab and select the source data set we have already covered file path type in our earlier videos for this scenario select file path in the data set if you wish to preview the data from the input container you can use this option preview data sync means destination for destination select the output data set which we have created and if you notice here a yeah, data set property is created because we have created a parameter in our output data set that is the reason here it is appearing we need to pass the value to our data set 
parameter from here which will be set as the file name of the output file. Click on add dynamic content in order to pass the value. Here we are going to pass the value of get metadata activity output which is having our last modified date of the input file. So just select it and what this will return is it will return the complete output of get metadata activity which we have copied here. So this will return the entire JSON but we don't want this entire JSON right. All we need is just the last modified property alone. We just want to read this property alone in this complete JSON. So how we can do it? What you need to do is just put dot and type whatever the property which you want. Simple. So it is showing last modified. Just click on it. Now let us see how the files are copied. Just leave as it is as of now. Just click on OK. Now let us debug. Yeah, it got completed. Now let us see how it is appearing in the containers. And in my storage account, let me go to the destination container. Here the folder structure is also not there and the file name is also not in our expected format. It is just having the last modified uh, date and time. Let me delete this blob and let's move to Azure Data Factory. And in the copy activity, we need to change this uh, dynamic content. So let me copy this. So we need to make changes uh, in order to uh, get our expected results. Let me paste in a notepad. This expression is returning the entire date and time of the file. So let me paste over here. But we don't uh, need in this format. So let me show how we can uh, get our expected format. First, let's try for year alone. So this is the target value which we want to get from the expression. First, let us see how we can get the year part alone, which is the first four characters of the value which we are getting from the expression. We have an option called a substring. What it will do is it will return a subset of value from the string, which means we can fetch a specific value from the string. So let me copy this expression from here and let's move to our notepad. And let me paste over here. So what substring will do is let me explain with the example. Suppose if you are uh, giving something like this, a string followed by the index or the position from where I need to extract. So let me put it as two followed by the length of the characters from the index. Let me put it as two and let me show what value it will return. This is index zero and this is index 1, 2. So from 2, it need to extract two characters, meaning like the length. So what it will return is O U. So this is what it will return. Now let us see how we can extract the year part first from our uh, expression. So let me copy the complete expression and let me paste over here. Let me remove this and this one as well and let me paste that expression. Just remember one point, we shouldn't have two at symbol in uh, nested expression. So let me remove one of them, just keep only one at the starting of the expression. Now, what we need to do is, we need to say from which index we need to extract. Let me put it as zero because I need to start from zero and followed by I need four characters. So specify the length as four. This will return the year part, which is 2022. And let me go to the target. In the target, what we need, we need this black slash, which we'll see at the end. The next part, which we need other than black slash is this month part. So let me show how we can extract the month part. For month part alone, uh, the procedure going to be the same. Let me copy paste. And we need 08 as value. So here we just need to modify the position rest of the item going to be the same. So start from position five and pick two characters. After here we have hyphen which is at fourth index. So the month starts with fifth index and two characters we need. So 
now coming to the date part let's ignore hyphen we need to start from index 8 and we need two positions so let me copy paste so we need value 20 and let us put here as 8 comma 2 and that's it now what we need to do is we need to combine all our values with the black slash in the middle and at the end we need this file name at the end so let us see how we can combine all these values so let me jump to azure data factory we have a dynamic expression so which is concat which will combine the number of strings together so let me copy it let's move to notepad and paste it over here let me explain what concat will do just provide all your strings separated by comma and that's it it will do the magic so for this string what it will return us it will combine both the strings and it will return us a single string so this is what it will do now let us use this for our scenario let me erase this part finally what we need to do is we need to concat all the expression which we have uh, created now so let's copy paste one by one so just ignore the at we need only one at at the beginning so i am copying this let me paste over here followed by comma and we need to add the black slash as well let me put the black slash in single quotes just be noted that we need to put our expression without single quote and for other strings we need to put single quotes let me copy the other one and let me paste over here now comma followed by black slash in single quotes comma and we need the expression of the date part let me copy the date part expression and let's paste over here and we need to put one more black slash followed by the file name so let me add a black slash in single quotes comma followed by the file name which is this part let me put it in single quotes because it is not expression it's a value and that's it this is our final expression let's copy paste the expression in azure data factory dynamic content so just add over here in case if our expression is wrong we will see a red color dot at the end so our expression doesn't have any issue just click on ok now let us run to test our uh, functionality the pipeline ran fine now let us jump to our uh, destination container to cross verify and after refresh we are able to see the year folder and month folder inside this we have date folder and we have the file name as we expected you may have a question for this scenario we have used only one file what if we have multiple files and each of the file is having different modified date and time maybe it may be the historical file as well so how we can handle that scenario for that just hit the bell icon and wait for my next video i am giving a small assignment to you guys just remember after finishing the scenario just go back to the section where we have created this output data set here parameterize the directory part and hard code the file name part if you are able to do it let me know in the comments thank you for watching this video follow me on linkedin to stay connected if you have any additional scenarios ping me on linkedin i cannot promise that i can do all the scenario but i can try my best and it could take a while to produce a video and that's it thank you bye bye